Mm-hmm. So uh, they have a huge conflict of interest there. Uh, the uh, I'm fairly cautiously optimistic about the the uh, chances to keep Europe relatively GMO free because there's such a grassroots opposition against this, and and uh, uh, it's like hormone fed beef. Uh, you know, the Europeans uh, drew the line on that and said, no, we're not going to accept this hormone fed beef. Even if the WTO fines us a hundred million uh, dollars a year, uh, fine, we'll, we'll pay the fine. Mm-hmm. Keep our, uh, our uh, you know, our, our beef consumption uh, free of these uh, antibiotics that the American uh, uh, CAFOs, these factory farm uh, giant industrial installations, pump into their beef. This is not this is not food. This is uh, toxins uh, packaged as, as, as meat. Mm-hmm. I recently um, had lunch with uh, a woman from Greece last weekend, and it was interesting because she she was um, a little bit hesitant to even eat here because yeah. of the amount of GMOs that we have in this country. Well, and, I don't blame her. And and it was like I almost felt like I had to apologize. I'm sorry. Yeah, we Mm-mm. we're passive here. We allow this. And, uh, well, you didn't have a chance because uh, Father Bush made sure that there was no labeling, mm-hmm. uh, that, uh, that the doctrine of substantial equivalence meant that there was no responsibility taken by U.S. government agencies who have the mandate to be responsible for the food, health, and safety of the population and the animal kingdom, uh, the FDA and, and so forth, uh, that they did no tests on GMO products. It was... The genie was let out of the bottle. This is the most insane criminal act of, of uh, probably the, the, the last century uh, or even longer. And uh, this this ought to be uh, prosecuted under, under the laws of genocide. And people like George Herbert Walker Bush and every president sent him who supports this madness uh, ought to be brought to the dock. And yet there are so many people that just are buying into it that... You know, well, they're this ignorant. Is a way they to... don't know anything. They only know, uh, you know, that, that's that's the culture of passivity, and uh, yeah. it's not accidental. Uh, yeah. uh, I grew up in the fifties, and uh, television wasn't yet such a popular uh, popular outlet, and and people talked more at the dinner table. They read newspapers and debated about things and so forth. They had different opinions, and uh, that's the culture we have to we have to recapture. I think. Mm-hmm. It really is insanity with the the recent deregulation of GMO alfalfa that mm. is Roundup ready when ninety three percent of the alfalfa crop doesn't even have they don't have a need to use pesticides and we're basically creating something creating a solution for a problem that does not exist. Well, not only that, but Roundup ready Roundup uh, is one of the most toxic substances uh, uh, known to man. It has been tested in universities, independent tests in in France and elsewhere uh, to show that it has uh, a devastating effect on human fetuses in in quantities much less than what's uh, sprayed in your your home garden, let alone the uh, the aerial spraying of crops uh, from GMO, uh, you know, Roundup Ready crops and so forth. So, uh, Glyphosate uh, compounds that uh, go into Roundup and then the uh, uh, additives they they stick into that. Uh, this and and the other problem is it's creating super weeds. Uh, right, right. Go around America and uh, examine the, or interview some farmers who are confronted with the super weed catastrophe, and and uh, that'll scare the pants out of any any healthy farmer who's got his wits still with him. What's your opinion on on how Obama is being influenced to press the GMO agenda? On one hand, he has his his first lady who is advocating organic crops and healthy eating, and on the other hand, every everyone he appoints to a position in his cabinet uh, is is supportive of GMOs, and he himself is pushing the GMO. Well, I I think. Uh... Uh, we ought to leave the first lady out of this. She's irrelevant. She has no elected position. She has no power. Well, maybe she has some power over Obama, although some people question that even. Uh, but uh, it's 
irrelevant. That's a red herring. Mm -hmm. uh, the point is, Obama appointed uh, Tom Vilsack, who's a, a Monsanto man from uh, as, as agriculture secretary. He's appointed uh, uh, Michael Taylor, the Monsanto lawyer who created the doctrine of substantial equivalence under Father Bush as a lobbyist for Monsanto years ago. Uh, you know, this uh, it's, it's a Monsanto-run policy. It's a GMO policy because it's a policy. It was created by the Rockefeller Foundation, as I said in, in the Seeds of Destruction book, uh, uh, this this is a much bigger project than, than simply uh, uh, corporate greed of Monsanto. This is, this is about controlling life on the planet. This is a eugenics agenda that these powerful families have dreamed about uh, uh, for more than a century. How to control these these masses out there who threaten to take our fortune away? They might get angry and say, "We're not going to bail out uh, Citibank and." Chase Manhattan and Goldman Sachs and all these people with taxpayer money, we're going to demand uh, our, our just uh, rewards here and take it away from, from uh, George Bush and uh, David Rockefeller and Bill Gates and uh, some of these people. Mm -hmm. That's what they're terrified of. So, so how eugenics is a way to keep people, uh, reduce the population, I think uh, another thing is, is the vaccination uh, agenda that they have. Keep people as as weak and sickly as possible. Let them be strong enough to to uh, get a decent day's work out of them, and then weak enough that they can't think about anything else. Would we have been seeing these same GMO policies being enacted no matter what president made it into office? Oh, I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. I don't think George Bush. Look, you've had the same policy from uh, Father Bush. You've had it from Bill Clinton, who's a clone of the Bush family, uh, according to reliable reports. You've had it uh, from from uh, Bush Jr., uh, George W., and you've had it from Obama. So there's a power there that's a national strategic priority. U.S. Department of Agriculture has backed Terminator seeds of Monsanto, even when Monsanto was afraid to go on the line uh, backing Terminator in 1999. USDA said this is a way to get U.S. exports of uh, vital crops onto the world market. Terminator. You mm -hmm. can sell the seeds to uh, <coughs> developing countries, and then uh, they commit suicide after one harvest. You're forced to go back to Monsanto. Uh, so, so it seems like too, it seems like that, um, the U S is using this technology, um, for, for continuing to have dominance, but it also seems like, uh, there's, there's been some leverage used in the U S by some of these families that you're talking about for their own agenda and they don't have a national allegiance so to speak. I, uh, I think their only allegiance is to their own power. They're, right. uh, you know, Lord Acton said uh, something like a century ago, he said, uh, uh, a British uh, politician, he said, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the madness of this full-spectrum dominance uh, doctrine of the Pentagon is that uh, it's an attempt for absolute power. Right. And uh, this is the most destructive thing that could happen to America. It's the most destructive thing that could happen to the world. Uh, and the only one who thinks it makes sense is a bunch of mad families who uh, are mentally uh, deranged enough to think that they're they're the gods of the universe. And they're exactly. not. You know, well, uh, we we actually have to wrap it up. I we I would love to talk with you again on the show, and I think uh, we we have so much some more interesting things to say um uh thank you so much for being on the show yeah and thank you william well thank you i yeah. enjoyed it yeah 
Well, next week at our show, we're going to be having Larry Jacobs from Jacobs Organic Farm. And in December, uh, Larry Jacobs won an appeal in California's Sixth Appellate District Court, which affirms farmers' rights to sue for damage to crops from pesticide drift, which was a huge win. Um, he had some he had some uh, product that he was selling to Whole Foods, which interestingly enough, Whole Foods tested, and it had pesticides, which led to this. So this is going to be an interesting show. So thank you for listening to Food Integrity Now.